selling in a downturn, how to generate leads, prospects, and sales when buyers are hard to come by. So not only necessarily hard to come by, but hard to, hard to get off the dime, hard to get a decision. So let's jump in. If you remember, March of 2020, uh, the world imploded, people went nuts, and business pretty much ground to a halt for a whole variety of reasons. That was the elephant in the room, not only the elephant on your lap, but the elephant in the room. The game plan for today is taking some lessons from the pandemic and figuring out during this time of economic downturn, recession, uncertainty, layoffs, tech industries imploding, banking industries imploding, real estate industries imploding, what can you do to get the attention and win more clients, not despite what's going on, but perhaps because of what's going on? So we're going to talk about how to survive, how to reposition, how to prevent losses, how to truly help your prospects with their sanity, their career, their income, how to avoid some sales landmines, how to build your lead generation machine and some next steps to help you make it happen. So let's talk about some shifts in a crisis. By the way, I'm gonna go fast, I'm gonna talk fast. You've got your workbook, grabmyworkbook.com. Take notes, take a breather. We'll have a huge Q&A at the end. Happy to answer all your questions as we're wrapping it up and landing the plane. So shifts in a crisis. Caring, empathy and relevance are always important sales skills. They are even more important right now. Your marketing needs to be tuned in 110% to the worries, concerns, fears, gaps, doubts, opportunities, risks, hopes, dreams, and outcomes of your prospects. The positioning, and we'll talk a little a bit more in detail about this, needs to be now more than ever. So what you used to do might be a nice to have, now you have to move into the have to have quadrant. Prevent the most common objections, knowing what they are, and knowing how to deflect those and turn them around, and preserve your earning power as a consultant, as a consulting firm, as an entrepreneur of your expertise. The good news is, based on what we're gonna to share today, you can get going on all five of these things right now. My friends, life rewards action. So if you sit on the sidelines and wait until people are ready to emerge out of their economic uncertainty, recession, depression, cocoon, you are gonna be in a major, major recession yourself. So uh, if you look back at every major recession, depression, uh, economic firestorm that we've been through, going all the way back to the 1980s and 1990s, depending how old you are. I'm sure there's a couple of folks here that remember those like I do, all the way through 9-11 in 2001, economic meltdown of 2007, 2008, mini meltdown in 2011, pandemic of 2020, Ukraine war of 2022, and now welcome to economic meltdown 2023. The folks that did well are the folks that got into immediate intelligent action, and they did not sit it out, they did not wait it out, and their businesses actually grew. So that's where we want you to be. Let's talk about sales in normal times, whatever norm, norm, normal times are. I'm gonna ask you to rate yourself in the question box. The scale goes zero to 100. Zero is a sales disaster. No sales tool system or process. You absolutely hate selling. You find it demotivating and sad. You wanna do everything but sales. And you know what, can I just outsource this? Can, can someone just sell for me? 100, and by the way, I don't think anyone's really a full zero, and I doubt anyone here is a full 100, including me. So trust me, if I'm not 100, you're probably not either. 100 looks like you've got incredibly consistent sales tools, sales systems, and sales process. You absolutely love selling. You find it energizing and fun. I, I do have that one. Uh, you hate to stop sales activity to do other things. And boy, oh boy, talking to prospects is the best. So in the question box, give yourself a self-rating score here. Again, I don't think anyone's a zero, uh, but you know, where are you on the scale? 25, 27, 30, 50, 90, 92, 88. I'm, probably, I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna give myself a 92. I actually took a sales assessment. I posted this on Facebook actually a, a few months ago uh, and I got a 94%, but I think that was kind of generous. So I'm gonna give myself as good as I am, I'm gonna give myself a 92. I'm, I'm never a hundred. I'm always growing, always learning. I think you are too. So let's look at the economic reality because my friends, I am not an economist and I don't play one on TV. I am, however, a member of the general public and so are you and so are your prospects. So whether there's a recession coming or not, whether there is economic uncertainty or not, whether there are meltdowns in the banking and financial and real estate industries or not, the news media and the atmosphere in which our products and services and coaching and consulting and training are being bought, the atmosphere is not caused by reality, the atmosphere is caused by perception. You could believe it's here or you could believe it's coming. Either way, if the chances of your house burning down are anywhere from 64% to 
don't you think you would invest in some fire extinguishers? The great David Ogilvy said, if you're going to sell fire extinguishers, first show the fire. And so think about it. This is a fantastic analogy. The, the, the media is saturating your economic buyers. It's saturating your prospects with 64% to 100% chance that your house is burning down. Would you want to buy a fire extinguisher? The answer is yes, of course you would. How do we position you as the fire extinguisher? Would you invest in fire extinguishers if you had a firm belief that there's a 64 to 100% chance of your house burning down? You probably would. I know I would. So here's what prospects do in this time of uncertainty, turbulence, and craziness. Vendor spend management. I'm putting that as cut discretionary spending. They reduce costs. They want to extend their runway. They totally want to reduce risk. Hunker down, avoid anything having to do with growth because it's tone deaf and it's crazy right now. They want to follow the herd. They want to avoid complexity. They are already implementing budget freezes, cost cutting, and they're eliminating non-essential spending. How about that? Now, in the chat, in the chat, I'm going to ask you, in the last 30 to 90 days, have you talked to an economic buyer that said, sorry, we can't do anything. We've got budget freezes. We're already cutting costs. We're laying off our people. We're eliminating all non-essential spending. We cannot hire any outside consultants, coaches, trainers. You need to change your positioning from nice to have to have to have. This is the fire extinguisher positioning. So if you come across their radar and your message is in line with what they want to do, which is extend, preserve, protect, safeguard, survive, restore, reboot, adapt, reduce, right? Extend the runway, preserve your cash flow, reboot your culture, adapt to the, the uncertainty, uh, reduce risk, all of those kinds of things. Shift your messaging so that the messaging actually includes these words, change, turbulence, turmoil, trouble, transition is another one. I didn't put it on the slide, but add transition to that list. Change, turbulence, turmoil, transition, trouble, uncertainty, downturn, and crisis. So the messaging needs to be now more than ever relevant to what they're going through right here, right now. The number one key to results is to take whatever you were doing pre-recession, pre-economic meltdown, and kiss that goodbye. The old mindset, the old values, the old messaging, the old positioning is not going to work for you when buyers are totally distracted and totally preoccupied with either what they think is going on or what is actually going on in their company and in their industry. The only good news I might have here, my friends, unlike March of 2020, this time you have toilet paper. Yes, that's right. This time you have toilet paper. And luckily, so do I. Very important. Very important. But so many parallels between what we just went through. I mean, it seems like a different universe. It also seems like maybe it was six months ago. Now it's not um, a pandemic virus. Now it's an economic virus of fear, uncertainty, recession, meltdowns, and the media frenzy around that. Even the perception of a recession or the perception of a downturn is all it takes to change buyer behavior. Let me repeat that. Don't worry about the facts. I mean, you can if you want to, but don't worry about the facts. The perception of a downturn is enough and is already changing the behaviors of your buyers. So that is real, that is real. The power formula for this repositioning, number one, sell what they wanna buy and sell what they wanna buy right now. Number two is making that move from nice to have to must have. Number three is boost your selling skills now. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then the plus one, the magic formula, which we're gonna dig into here in a moment, is add a new wrapper around your existing content. Add a new wrapper around your existing content that speaks to the current moment of economic downturn, uncertainty, craziness, uh, recession, depression, meltdown, budget cuts, hiring freezes, layoffs, et cetera. So let me share with you a couple of client wins. And this was just from the last six months, because really we were talking about this re recession, depression thing since uh, about October or November of last year. And these are all deals that went down in that time frame. So our client, Robert, purchase order came in today. Deal is sealed, $70,000 for a series of workshops over the next five months. He is still delivering those today, by the way. So he signed that deal. He is still, those are ongoing and they're about to renew and, and they will renew. Uh, Jen says, both clients renewed for just under 200K each. One of them is reducing staff. Now listen up, listen up. One of them is reducing staff and doing budget cuts. So I was nervous but they know they need this now. Who is the first person that had to know they need this now? Jen was the first person that had to know they need this now, and she was able to transfer that belief to the client to the tune of two different clients, two different $200,000 contract renewals. P 
Pete said, just got the signed contract for a six month, $137,000 project paid up front, paid up front. They were pushing back on starting now or waiting because of the uncertainty. They were pushing back on starting now or waiting, but the CEO said, we must fix this now. It can't wait. It can't wait. Working with you can't wait if you do this the right way, the way that we're going to talk about here during our time together. So some landmines and pitfalls. Landmine number one, when you're entering this economic uncertainty, crazy, roiling, white water of frenzied you know, mindset craziness, you start cutting your fees out of desperation, fear, or scarcity. So basically, you're buying into the panic. This only attracts a huge tribe of tire kickers, non-buyers, and broke-ass clients. Please don't do that. You are building the wrong tribe who will never grow your business. Landmine number two, having no process or system baked into your service offerings, people don't trust that you can really get them the results that they want. What does that mean? That means too much convincing, persuading, objections, and resistance. And that's only multiplied in times of uncertainty when people are really afraid of risk. They're really afraid of debt. They're really afraid of the, them going under. You know, They're concerned, will I even have a job in three months? Will this company even be around in three months? Or will it go under like Silicon Valley Bank? Will it go under uh, like some of the tech companies and some of the, the real estate companies that we've been seeing in the headlines? So the system, and this is our system for our MBA mentoring program, and you've seen this before if you've been with us, I'm not gonna dig into this, but having a visual of a system is also the same visual that you can use as a sales tool because visuals sell, visuals sell. So if you say, hey, there's seven parts to what we help our clients do, strategy, packaging, focus, prospects, outreach, sales, and leverage, and if any one of those things is missing, you're gonna experience the symptom or the condition on the right. So tactic itis, commodity, squirrel, pinball, uh, best kept secret, slowly going broke and burnout. So as, if I were to walk you through this, which we don't have time for today, that would be a fantastic five minutes of a very powerful visual model based sales conversation. So we also have our MBA model that talks about the, we call this the meatball model. Uh, and again, it's about positioning, messaging, offers, targeted leads, optimized outreach, reliable conversion, revenue multipliers, scalable leverage, trusted team. When we go around these nine accelerators, for most uh, expert service firms and expert service solopreneurs, we can literally pinpoint and point to that part of the model where they've got problems, issues, challenges, they're falling short, they're in the red zone, et cetera. Third kind of model that might be helpful, and again, I'm not gonna go over this because this is just what we use to sell some of our other programs, but everything we do is about better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees. So when, when I map out, hey, listen, there's four levels. There's the struggle bunnies, and here's what they're up against. They hit a wall of fear and ignorance. They think they have a marketing problem. They really have a strategy and a positioning problem. Then there's the folks that are in the yellow zone and uh, they still have some issues with uh, not so great clients, medium-sized deals, uh, occasionally upselling, et cetera. Then we've got the light green folks. The light green folks are doing okay, but maybe a little bit of arrogance and complacency has set in that they're getting okay with doing okay. And so the myth that's going in their head is, hey, we're doing okay, let's not rock the boat. Let's not mess with success. And then when I describe the rock stars, the folks that have unstoppable traction because they know how to market in a downturn, they know how to sell in a downturn, and they know that if their clients have big, hairy, scary problems, the truth of the situation is solve bigger problems, get bigger checks. Write that down somewhere. Solve bigger problems, get bigger checks. So if you're saying, oh my gosh, the sky is falling, everything is terrible, everything is horrible, we've got worse problems than ever before, that is great news because you're not a professional consultant, you're not a professional consulting firm, you're not a professional coach, you're not a professional speaker, you're not a professional anything, you're a professional problem solver. So if you position yourself as a professional problem solver and their problems are bigger than ever, you win. So landmine number three relates to exactly what I just said, the same messaging as before. You show up on their doorstep for a sales conversation, totally tone deaf and not downturn ready. The problem is you seem ignorant, insensitive, out of touch, and your services are completely not connected to their immediate urgencies right now, their burning platform, their biggest, hairiest, scariest problems. And they see you as an irrelevant pest instead of as a welcome guest. And if you do this the right way, you will actually be able to sell more in a downturn, not less. Let me repeat that. If you have everything we're talking about today dialed in, you'll be able to sell more in a downturn, not less, not less. So how do you refocus on right now? How do we do that positioning shift? Well, generally there's soft skills and there's hard skills, right? So soft skills, soft skills programs, this kind of thing, motivating, inspiring, you made me laugh, you made me cry, I spilled my soda, better than Phantom, better than Cats, milk came out my nose. Those soft, soft type of programs are always hard to sell. 
What's easier to sell and where you should be all the time anyway is on the hard skills side where you're talking about results, outcomes, skills, tactics, what to say, how to say it, what to do, how to do it. And you're giving them tangible, actionable uh, insights, not just information, but insights. So that's gonna work all the time. What's the third layer that you need now during a crisis? Now you need to add the messaging layer that connects with the relevance of their reality. Let me repeat that. You need the messaging layer that connects with the relevance of their reality. So let's say you're doing leadership. You're a leadership consultant, leadership speaker, you're a leadership consulting firm, leadership in a downturn. How to get a leadership job when no one's hiring. Leadership during tough times. Leadership through trouble, transition, and turmoil. Leadership in a crisis. Leadership in times of uncertainty. If you've modified your programs, your consulting, your coaching, your training, your facilitation, your mastermind groups, whatever it is that you're selling, if you reposition them by 20%, and added 20% new content that would be relevant in a downturn when no one's hiring, during tough times, in trouble, transition, and turmoil. You would take your relevance meter from about a 30% up to about a 90%, and people will talk to you. People will talk to you because you are marketing in the now, you are marketing in the moment, and you are selling in the moment, and you are connecting immediately with the relevancy and the urgency that they're experiencing right now. So I'm not saying, hey, just change the title of your consulting packages. Hey, just change the title of your training seminars. You might start by changing the title of your training seminars and your consulting and coaching packages, but I would encourage you add that 20% of substance so that this is something that will truly help your clients in this time of economic uncertainty, recession, depression, meltdown, craziness. Now, let's talk about sales resistance. When your prospects are chicken little, and chicken little, of course, always says the sky is falling, the sky is falling. The comeback when, oh my God, terrible time, can't do anything, meltdown, hiring freezes, uh, vendor cutbacks, you know, layoffs, we had to lay off 20% of our people already. Whatever they're saying, you take a nice deep breath, you pause. This is in your workbook, by the way, this next thing I'm about to share with you. The comeback to this is the sky is falling, everything's terrible, hiring freeze, budget cuts, blah, 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 blah. And remember what you just did here on the previous slide. You made this and you shifted this into immediately relevant, immediately usable in a downturn, when no one's hiring, trouble, transition, turmoil, in a crisis, times of uncertainty, they're giving you, oh my God, can't do it, everything's crazy, everything's nuts, blah, 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 terrible time in our industry, horrible meltdowns. You take a nice deep breath and you say, I know, that's why we're talking. Jot that down, put that in your workbook in those blanks that are in there. The comeback is, I know, that's why we're talking. Six words, six words that will make you tens of thousands of dollars over the next two or three months, if you use them the right way. I know that's why we're talking. So you've got the medicine, you're the doctor, the patient is sicker than ever and coughing and hacking and phlegm is flying all over the place. They say, doc, I, I wish I could hire you, right? Doc, I feel terrible. Doc, this is awful. Doc, I've never felt worse in my life. I know that's why we're talking. That's why you came into the office. I know that's why we're talking. And then having the the justification and having the rest of that objection prevention, objection reversal toolkit in your library. So let's talk about some prospecting mistakes. Prospecting mistakes in a downturn, but even during regular times, is not enough prospecting activity, including zero prospecting activity, or trying to serve everybody. Totally random, shotgun, spray and pray, everyone's a prospect. No idea how to open the first 10 seconds, no relevance to their present circumstances, which I just showed you how to fix, and no research to find the right angle or the right opportunity to make that entree so that you've earned the right to say, I know, that's why we're talking. So here's what buyers want. This is a hinge marketing survey. And this is where most professional services firms fall short. Not meeting expectations, poor deliverables, and lack of understanding are what consulting buyers seek to avoid most often. Lack of understanding in the current context will wipe you off the map. You will have no business, you will make no sales, you will have no clients. If you are trying to sell to panicked, freaked out buyers, whether they're right or not to be freaked out, we're not here to judge, but they are panicked by the economic meltdown, recession, downturn, craziness that they're immersed in, whether it's real or not, the perception is enough to change their behavior. So one of the ways to get around this is to look at the best of the best. The soundbite is the best of the best are the ones who invest. So look for the market leading companies. Look for the best companies to work for in a whole variety 
of different industries and dimensions and so forth. I've just given you a very small starter set here. Black Enterprise Magazine has a fantastic list, best companies for diversity, fast companies, most innovative companies, the best places to work for LGBTQ equality, uh, the Canada's best employers for recent graduates. If you deal with millennials, if you deal with young people or high, high potential uh, you know, first time managers, uh, most inclusive workplace, best places to work in IT, best, so best places to work in a specific industry, best companies in a specific region, like top companies to work for in Arizona or the top workplaces 2023 for the Washington Post. Canada's top family-friendly employers. So if you work with women, for example, or if you work again with younger folks, family-friendly, work-life balance, health, wellness, all that kind of jazz. America's best insurance companies from Forbes 2023. There are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these lists. The people that are at the highest performing companies are the ones that invest in outside coaching, training, and consulting. So let's talk about doing some research. Let's talk about what that initial email might look like. Couple of rules of the road, engaging subject line and first sentence, very important. I'll give you an example of this in a moment. Four to six sentences, very short. Do not write big, long, bloviated emails. No attachments, no images, no fancy jazz. Very clear call to action, which is simply to get them to respond. The objective is to engage and respond and take the next baby step. So here's an example of an email. Ron, shortage of engineering talent. So you've done your homework, you've done your research, you've looked online, you've looked at the industry news and the landscape. So you have some information to share like a trusted advisor. That's what's in yellow. Then you've researched Ron and Ron's company and you realize they're opening up an entirely new office in their biotech engineering company in Kansas City and they might be headed for trouble. So the industry research is in yellow and the Ron specific or Ron's company specific is in blue. New numbers show fewer biotech engineers looking for work in the second quarter. Forecasted to be even worse in 2024. So that is industry fact data. What Ron's gonna connect with is as you expand into the Midwest, right? News story, hiring 600 bioengineers in Kansas City. As you expand into the Midwest, this could be a serious recruiting problem. I'm Jane Jones. I help companies like yours solve the engineering recruiting issue. Notice that is the shortest part of this entire outreach email. Ron, I'd be happy to share two to three specific ideas for your exact situation and goals. That line is super important. That is the call to action. I'd like to share two or three specific ideas for your exact situation and goals and then tell them what to do. Don't make them guess, don't make them look it up. You can call me at this number or choose a convenient time that works for you. Here's my calendar link. And then you always end that email with worth a chat. Worth a chat question mark. Do not put anything else. When you leave the end of an email with a question, you increase your response rate by about 60%. So do not put, looking forward to hearing back from you. Do not put, looking forward to talking. Do not put anything else other than that closing question. Worth a chat question mark. And then I would just sign off David. You would sign off your name. And that is an email that will get a response because it's tailored, it is personalized, and here's the litmus test. If you're sending emails like this and you can copy and paste the email verbatim to more than one human being, that is a boilerplate templatized email and that will never work. I can only send this to Ron because only Ron is expanding into the Midwest. Only Ron was featured in the story about his company hiring 600 engineers in Kansas City, right? So the framework, I can reuse the framework over and over and over again, but Ron's email is customized to Ron and Jennifer's email is gonna be customized to Jennifer and Barbara's email is gonna be customized to what I find out about Jennifer and her company and what they're up against and what they're going through and what risks they're under and what opportunities they're facing. So this kind of research and relevance takes your outreach from zero to hero, zero to hero. Let's talk about follow-up next. Follow-up, of course, the biggest problem when people go dark on you is not talking to the right people up front not connecting with high probability buyers that you know you can help, too much pushing, too much striving, too much persuading and convincing, which leads to peddler and vendor positioning, and zero value follow-up, as opposed to value-rich follow-up. Value-rich follow-up, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment, always be helping, always be serving. It's really important that a trusted advisor sale, the pre-sale value is a foreshadowing of the post-sale value. So always lead off with the prospect's comments from the previous call. Ask a follow-up question to each comment that they make, meaning take nothing at face value. Always dig, always probe, always agitate, uncover, question, challenge. You gotta peel the onion and find out what's really going on. What's the issue behind the issue? What's the problem behind the problem? What's the outcome behind the outcome? It's not a need or a pain until you hear it from them, meaning never mind read, never assume, and never put words in their mouth, and never leave one call without booking the next call on their calendar. 
So leaving a follow-up call with me, okay, well, call me when you thought about it. Call, you know, call me when you're ready to move forward. Give me a buzz when you're ready. All of those, you are losing tens of thousands of dollars of sales every time one of those phrases leaves your mouth. So you never leave one call without booking and confirming a date and a time on their calendar for what the next step is gonna be and when that next step is gonna happen. Let's talk about some pricing mistakes. And again, this is downturn specific. The first thing that you do and the first thing that so many of our uh, folks wanted to do in March of 2020, our clients, is they wanted to drop their prices. We probably prevented about 50 different consultants, coaches, speakers, and trainers from dropping their prices because that was the first thing that they all wanted to do. And this discount first mentality has to stop. If you're a doctor, you've got the medicine, there is sickness all throughout the land. Are your services more valuable or less valuable than when everyone is healthy and rosy and doing great? The answer is it's more valuable. So the last thing you should do is drop your prices or drop your shorts. Price is too low to begin with is another problem that we help you fix, caving on price too soon and too often. And my friends, here's the sound bite. Nobody will value your products and services higher than you do. So when you say, hey, I have great news, it's $3,000. No one is gonna turn around and say, you know what, it is so important to us, it is so valuable, we would not like to pay you $3,000, instead, we would like to pay you $10,000. So please, can I get an amen in the question box? If you're, if you're grooving along with me here, nobody will value your products and services and programs higher than you do. So if you're not the best advocate and champion for being reassuringly expensive, trust me, my friends, your prospects will not be the champions for you being reassuringly expensive either. So yes, thank you for all the amens there. Sukuma and William and Kim and Stephen, Patty, Laura, uh, Tamara, Tuli, AJ, Kathy. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, amen, amen times 10. All right. Pricing is a combination of mindset and confidence and talking in outcomes. Do not talk about what your program is. Talk about what your program does and what your program means. And this also has to do with pricing. So let's talk about some pricing secrets. Always do a three-tier option. In our uh, high fee sales program, we call this good, better, best. And good, better, best pricing always gives people a choice of how, how they want to work with you. Always tie money to either the time or the economic cost of not implementing. So what's the cost if they get it wrong or if they ignore it? What's the benefit if they get it right or they solve it or they solve it faster? Coney, by the way, is cost of not implementing, cost of not implementing. The pains are more painful during economic uncertainty, you know, re recession craziness. So your value should go up. It does not go down. And you need to ask more questions, stay in the conversation longer, take the conversation deeper, and tie everything that you hear back to their immediate priorities and their strategic initiatives that they're telling you are really important to them in this current moment. So I wanna take you back to August of 2020. August of 2020, it was crazy pandemic time. Our amazing client, Deb Rubin, was closing bigger deals than ever before. And this was, again, economic uncertainty, lockdown, layoffs, shutdowns, crazy time. So this is August 24th of 2020. I get an email that says, bam, just won a 90K consulting project. And she had talked to me about this one before. And I said, was this the new one that we were kicking around the visual proposal pieces? She says, yes, phase one as fast as possible. Smack in the middle of COVID. This is, this is uh, pre-vaccine. This is pre, we didn't know what the heck was going on and she's closing $90,000 consulting projects. A couple of weeks later, just closed a $30,000 virtual workshop series, hashtag do it marketing, hashtag make awesome happen. So she made this little um, uh, sticky note on her desk and she took a shot of it on her phone and then she texted it over to me. So this becomes a pattern of winning. You can have a pattern of losing, you can have a pattern of sitting on the sidelines, or you can have a pattern of making things happen. So all within a few weeks, literally $120,000 of new business, right smack in the middle of this pandemic that we didn't even know the beginnings of what was going on in August of 2020. And there was no end in sight, but companies were solving problems because their problems were worse. Their problems were worse in August of 2020 than they were in January of 2020. So let's talk about some closing mistakes, not asking for the sale, not enforcing that clear next step on their calendar, waiting for them to make a decision, too much hoping, wishing, and praying, using gimmicky old school closing techniques that cause discomfort, here are some facts, my friends. You will not survive if you cannot sell in a downturn. I just went through the whole list, 2001, 2008, 2011, 2020, 2022, 2023. It seems like they're coming every year now. Uh, the next one, whatever global meltdown, pandemic, recession, war, craziness, uh, you need to be able to navigate in a storm. 
Sales is the number one job for any consultant, any consulting firm. The better you are at client selection, the worse you can be at everything else. Meaning that highly targeted prospecting I just showed you, that needs to become second nature. That needs to become a learned skill that you practice and sharpen time after time after time after time. The better your offer and the more relevant your offer, the easier it is to sell in any economy. So stop pushing and striving, focus on helping them buy. Focus on buying facilitation, not on sales and pushing. If you have everything firing on all cylinders, you will be bulletproof regardless of the crisis du jour. And the shocking truth, my friends, income is not optional. You cannot wait this out. You are losing tens of thousands of dollars every single month that you are not sharpening your selling in a downturn skill set. Uh, I shared this at the end of some of my other presentations. We're not at the end yet, but I just want to put this out here. There are many paths up the mountain. And if you look at the different levels of success in any industry, in any endeavor, there's wannabes, newbies, gonna be's, and is's. And my advice to you is this is the time to get serious, get help, or get out. So the wannabes and the newbies, we, we know who they are. The gonna be's, if they're aspiring to get to the top of the mountain, but for some reason they fall off, they don't invest in training, they don't stay current, they become irrelevant, they become just noisy peddlers blowing in the wind. The problem is that the gonna be's become never gonna be's. The is's, the people that are already somewhat successful now, they're not staying there, they're committed to always getting better. So I would suggest to you that instead of climbing the mountain manually and going up slowly and painfully step by step by step, take the helicopter, take the easy path up the mountain. If there are many paths up the mountain, take the path of committing right now to always getting better. And you will get to the top of that mountain with the rest of the is's just like everybody else. So let's talk about why you showed up today. It could be that you feel that you just don't have the sales gene and selling might be hard enough even in regular times, let alone during a downturn. And you're just tired of not winning the sales that you deserve. It could be that you wanna protect your business from this downturn and prevent getting cut, eliminated and blocked from clients during spending cuts and budget freezes and layoffs. Or like me, deep down, you know that boosting your sales ability is the key to help you land better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees in any economy.